Welcome to the Jesse's Designs Knitting Podcast, episode 19. My name is Jesse. I am the maker and the designer behind Jesse's Designs. I welcome you if this is the first time that you are watching the podcast. Here I share everything that I have been needing since the last time I saw you. I share with you maybe my current webs, um, if I have purchased any yarn, something that maybe we are doing as a family that I think you're going to enjoy watching or getting to know. And on this episode, I am going to share everything about Rhinebeck Weekend. If you have been here before, welcome again. I hope that you all enjoy this episode that is filled with all of the fiber arts. So this weekend, which is the third weekend of October, we go to Rhinebeck. This was Saturday, October the 18th in Rhinebeck, New York. The New York Sheep and Wool Festival takes place. If you want to see the things that I did to get ready for Rhinebeck weekend, you may watch my previous episode and I share in there my Rhinebeck sweater, my daughter's Rhinebeck sweater. So as I talk, I am going to be showing you footage in here so you can see more of what happened. So I'm happy to say that both sweaters were finished. They were all blocked and the, we, the ends were woven except for like a few, but nobody <laughs> could see that. So I have to, to get to that soon before we wear them again. So I love the feel of my sweater. It was a lovely weekend. It wasn't really cold. It was, I think it was about 60 something degrees that Saturday. So it was very comfortable. I just wore a coat in the beginning, like in the first maybe hour or two. The rest of the day, uh, my daughter and I could just stay on with our sweaters and they were beautiful. It was lovely. They were both lovely. She wore both sleeves, all finished. Last year, she wore her sweater without sleeves, but it, because it was cold and rainy, she was wearing a coat, so nobody could see that she was missing the sleeves. But as you can see, maybe already on the video, um, she wore her sweater just beautifully. I love to see it. So people, they commented. Some of them, they noticed it was the same, the same pattern and... Again, we love wearing our sweaters for Rhinebeck Weekend. So I'm going to share with you what I did from the Friday before and then all the way up to the last day, okay? So be ready. I have a lot of things to show you. It was very exciting. I'm still super tired. I'm so exhausted, but I wanted to record the podcast before I would forget some things while everything is fresh on my mind. So here we go. So the, the Friday before, I attended two events. So Pick Up Every Stitch is a yarn store in Mount Kisco. They hold an event called The Road to Rhinebeck. So that took place the Thursday before and the Friday before Rhinebeck. I went Friday morning and the, they had a trunk show with Camellia Fiber Arts. So I got to meet Sylvia, which is the owner, the hand dyer of Camellia Fiber Co., not Fiber Arts, Fiber Co., and I got three skeins of yarn. Her, her yarn was just beautiful. The colors are so pretty. They are so soft. It was just a pleasure to look at them. Uh, she didn't have that many left because obviously... Um, the event started on Thursday, so a lot of people came on Thursday to the yarn store. Um, Karen and Felicia are the owners, so a lot of people went there, a lot of people purchased the yarn. So I was very happy to see that there was still quite a few and we could take a pick. So my daughter, she chose this color. This is a beautiful shade of green. I think I'm going to make make her... Um, I'm not sure yet if a small shawl or if a beanie. Um, let's see. And for me, I chose um, these two colors. Let me see if I can see the, the name of the colorway. Um, Blue Poppy is this one. Let me see if I can make the camera adjust to the color. Uh, 
Okay, I think we got it a little bit. Let me try again. Okay, here we go. Look at this beautiful soft shade of blue. And I'm going to pair it together with this blue mohair. I don't know if I'm going to make myself a beanie with it or um, a shawl as well. But the colors were so, so beautiful that I just had to get them. So that's what we purchased at Pick Up Every Stitch. We got to stay with Sylvia for a little bit, just talking to her. She was telling us or sharing with us a little bit of the story, how she hand dyes the yarn and the things that she do in Nashville. And if you go to her Instagram profile, you can see very clearly that she takes or that she has attention to detail. You can see how beautiful her feet is. Um, the, the photography is absolutely stunning. You can see the yarn. And now that I have seen it in person, it's just beautiful, beautiful. So I, I look forward to work on these projects and in the future to get more yarn to make more pretty pieces with them. So that was Thursday morning. And then I went to pick up my friend Angie. Um, she's Whistle and Wool on Instagram. If you do not know who she is, she just released a book, Crochet in a Day. I'm going to share some footage of here with the book because I forgot when I was going to record and I left it downstairs um, because I was looking and reading um, the book. So she just released this book and it's filled with beautiful pieces that you can make in one day. And they are just so cozy. So take a look at that. So I picked up Angie. And then we went to Cake Palooza. We were there from four to six. And even though we were the last ones to be there, there was still plenty to see. I got to see Alisa, which is the organizer for Cake Palooza. And the event was just um, as good as it has been the other years that I have been at. I'm gonna check my notes because um, I don't wanna forget anybody. So we met, um, again, I met Julie Asselin a few weeks ago when she came to my local yarn store, Star Solo Yarns. If you don't know Julie Asselin, she's an amazing hand dyer. She's just such a lovely girl, super fun to be with. And she has beautiful yarn. So soon you're gonna see, it's over here somewhere. You're gonna see that later. I'm gonna make something with her yarn and I cannot wait. So we got to see Julie this time again, and it was lovely. We spent just a few minutes together because it was almost time for everybody to start picking up um, their materials, their pieces, their tents. Um, so we couldn't be there for a long time. I saw Kimberly, and if you don't know Kimberly, Kimberly has an amazing pod podcast. It's called Need a Rainbow. Some of the handles um, I forgot to write, so I'm going to put all of the handles of everybody that I'm going to be talking at, uh, about on the description below. So make sure that you take a look at that. So Kimberly has a Need a Rainbow podcast, and it's one of my favorite podcasts to watch. She's super sweet. She has the most beautiful smile, and we were there for a little bit. She was sharing a tent with Vanessa from Ben Renitz. Also a beautiful girl with an amazing smile, super talented. They are both makers and designers. So they are an absolute ray of sunshine. Everything that they work on, it's fun, it's beautiful, it's pretty, it's delicate. So make sure that you take a look at their Instagram handles. I met for the first time Chantal and her husband. They came from Canada for the first time to attend Rhinebeck. And if you see... Her Instagram, you can tell that she's fun. She's really fun in person too. She was such a sweet girl as well. Um, it's a beautiful mixture of fun and sweet. So I got, we got to be with her for a little bit um, during the event and take a few pictures and just talk all things fiber arts. And it was lovely to finally have been, met, have been able to meet her. Um, I also saw Alexi again. Alexi is one of those makers that um, I have seen before um, during Rhinebeck, but it's the first time that I see her at this event. So we also got to be uh, with her for a little bit, talking and talking. And she's always so, so very sweet. Is one of those makers that if you approach her, she's not fast or you don't have the feel, at least I don't have the feel that... You just have to say a quick hello, a quick goodbye, and that's it. But she gives you 
um, that feeling of you can stay and talk to me for a bit. So it was it was very lovely to to have been able to talk to Alexi uh, for a while. Um, I had my daughter with me, and she had her daughters with her. And one of the things that I already posted about that on my Instagram is that as a maker, as a designer, I really value the fact that my daughter has been so welcomed in the community. When I go to these events um, and when I have been at other events, they say, you know, it's okay. You know, if you want to bring your daughter, it's fine. So she has been going with me to everything she, since she's three. So she values that. I mean, she gets excited about all of these events like I do. And now that she's older, she knits and she crochets, she, it, everything has much more meaning for her because now she's not just with me, accompanying me, but she has been also part of the events. And my mama heart is just full. I really, really enjoy seeing that. And I just appreciate and, and value the fact that she has been welcomed, like I have said before. So um, let me see, Kekulusa. Uh Julie. Okay, so I think, I believe they are all the, the ones that I met at Cake Palooza. So after, um, Alexi invited a few of us to her home, which I thought it was, it was a surprise. Um, it was so nice. It was so sweet to to give that invitation. So we went to her house after Cake Palooza and were there for a little bit with a few other makers. Uh, some of them I know, some of them I do not know, and, and I would like to get to know them a little more um, in the future. So some of them were Tony from TLY Crafts. Um, Shiwei was there. Uh, Chantal, Ashley from Sorella Yarn, Angie was there. Um, I know I'm forgetting some, but I'm gonna be sharing pictures in here. And again, in the description, you're gonna see the handles of the ones that I am forgetting at the moment. So we did that after Cake Palooza, and it was a lovely evening. She lives in a beautiful area. Uh, we got to see her son. Um, I saw her. I saw him for the first time. The last time I saw Alexi, the year before in Rhinebeck, she was heavily pregnant, and it was very cute to see um, her son now um, all born and so beautiful and cute. So that was very lovely. So the next day, uh, we woke up early. We went to bed very late the night before. We woke up very early to go to Rhinebeck. So I picked up Angie and we head to Rhinebeck. It was the most beautiful array of colors. So if you are in Connecticut on, or you know Connecticut, New York, New England, um, in general, we have amazing colors at this time of the year. Usually the third week of October is like the peak of the colors and we got to see the most beautiful, the most beautiful colors um, this year. So it was a lovely drive. Um, everything is an hour and a half, two hours, two and a half hours, something like that. So the whole time that, that I was driving during the day, it was just absolutely beautiful with all the colors, the gold and the oranges, the reds. So we got to... Um, Ryan Beck, and we came with our daughters as well. So the pace was a little bit, I'm not going to say it's low. Um, it was lower because we had to do things with the girls as well. But they are old enough that I think they enjoyed everything. My daughter, she loves the whole thing. She loves looking at the yarn, the accessories, the toys that are there, um, the animals. We love to see the animals. And there is a few buildings where we can see them. So we took our time in there, took pictures, or just stay there looking at all the cuteness that these beautiful animals bring. All kinds of sheep, sheep, um, alpacas, some llamas were there. So it was, it was just lovely. So talking about the makers or the podcasters that I, I got to see during Rhinebeck, the first ladies that I saw were the girls from Wool and Wine. So, okay, um, Claudia. Oh my goodness, I'm blanking. The lovely girls from Wool and Wine. I love their podcast. Uh, I know I'm going to remember at some point um, because it's a lot, a lot to share. Um, so it's Claudia, Janet, and 
I'll put it here. I'm sorry, I knew everybody's names when I met them again. I saw um, these lovely girls um, last year for the first time at Pick Up Every Stitch, and I have watched the podcast for a long time. And it was it was a surprise to see them first, so I just screamed, oh, here you are, and all of that. So we got to to be um, together a few times during Rhinebeck, I think maybe two or three, uh, we got to see each other. Uh, at the beginning in one of the buildings, and then we saw each other again on the hill where you can meet at some point during the day your designers that you love and the makers, and and you just gather there to talk. So I saw them, uh, and then um, I went to the booth of Junction Fiber Mill. I also love their podcast, and I love their yarn. I haven't seen their yarn anywhere, so I had not been able to purchase it, but I was looking forward to meet them this time because I wanted to purchase something from theirs. Um, again, the podcast is absolutely cool because you can see you know, how they make the yarn, you can see the colors, things in the life of the, of the people behind Junction Fiber Mills. So I got this yarn, it's called Making Tracks, 100% American Wool. Look at this. I don't know what I'm going to make with it. I'm thinking I'm going to make myself a beanie. And I'm looking forward to have this yarn on my needles. Uh, we also took a few pictures by the tree. There is one tree in Rhinebeck. I'm going to put a picture here. I don't know. I say that is the famous tree. I don't know if it's the famous tree, but I always take pictures under the tree and I see other people <laughs> taking pictures under that tree as well. So I'm just going to call it the famous Rhinebeck tree. So we took a few pictures in there. I saw the girls from the Knitting Posse. Again, I love their podcast as well. Um, they share these three wonderful girls. They share what they are making. They share the yarns that they have purchased. And it's just inspiring. The girls from Wool and Wine, the girls from Knitting Posse, they have made me put a lot of patterns on my knit to do list or my knit to list um, that I want to make in the future because almost everything that they have there, it's something that I look at and I say, I think I would love to wear that. Um, so they didn't disappoint this time. They were all wearing the same pattern and they look absolutely cozy and so, so precious. I also met for the first time Irina from Fiber Chats. So we talk, we got to talk for a little bit, lovely girl. Um, we were on the hill. I got to see Shelby. Shelby is Gigi's daughter. And so we talked a lot actually, and I loved it. She's, she's just so sweet. She's so sweet and, and it's always refreshing. Uh, when I have talked to Gigi, to Shelby, it feels very refreshing. So I was glad to be able to spend some time with him. Vincent from Vesuvius Cross was there. He gives the biggest hugs and is, he's just wonderful. Um, Melissa from Woods and Wool, I got to meet her officially for the first time um, last year at Rhinebeck. I, I saw her and I was close to say hello to her, but in the hill when you have, you know, all these amazing designers, sometimes we line up to say hello to them or we stay close by. So I stay close by to Melissa uh, to say hello, kind of waiting for my turn. But I think at some point he got busy or somebody came to me or something. So by the time I turned around, I, I don't think she was there anymore so, and I didn't see her. So it was lovely to being able to meet her this time, to meet her sweet mother. Um, her, her mom was a delight to talk to. Um, again, everything, everybody that gave attention to my daughter or made her feel welcome, uh, that just touched my heart. So she was one of quite a few of the, the ones that we met or that we talked to that gave a lot of attention to her. So that was always so nice. And, and I hope that I get to see her mom again. I hope to see you soon, Melissa's mom. Maybe next year you get to go again to this event. We met for the first, first time Ashley and her husband CJ from Sorella Yarn. I don't know. I feel that I mentioned before, but maybe not. So she's super sweet. Uh, we got to be with her uh, for a while. And and she was also, oh, that's because I, I talked to her about that before. Um, she was at Alexis' house the night before. So 
Um, you know, when you meet this maker, at least that's how I feel. Um, I want to let them know, for example, the things that I love about them, about what they do. So I share what I love about Ashley's work. Um, in my case, for example, I, I, I mean, I don't want to sound like I am, I don't know, like I'm making it about myself, but I, I love color. I love, um, I have painted for many years. I was an art teacher um, and I taught a lot of things, but when she shows her mood boards, if you go to her Instagram, for example, and she shares, you know, the mood boards about the colorways or the collections that she's coming out with, I really love that. And that's one of the things that, oh, that is so cool. And I love to see what was the inspiration behind the collection. So um, when I meet a maker or a designer, I love to point out, you know, what is the thing that it really gets me from, from what you do. So it was very nice to meet them both. They are both very nice, very sweet, a very gentle um, way of being, like demeanor. Is that the right word? Like they are so gentle when they are talking and, you know, the kind of people that you're talking back and forth, like they pay attention to you. And, you know, at this point, everybody must have been so tired. You meet so many people and talk to so many. But, again, it's very refreshing when kind of you like, oh, you breathe and, okay, let's let's keep talking. Um, at least in my case, I'm a little bit shy um, going to somebody. So when I approach somebody, it takes everything <laughs> from me to go there. So it kind of calms me down when when you can see like the gentle demeanor is something that I see in quite a few makers and something that I saw a lot this weekend. So I am super grateful for, um, to everybody that, you know, gave us time and, you know, and we could talk for a bit, even though they were exhausted and tired and they were talking to a million people. So that was very nice. Um, I saw Victoria from Vida Lifestyle. I have known Victoria for a few years and I love her as a maker. She's the cutest person, super sweet, and I love her collections. I love her yarn. I have used it quite a, quite a few times. And I didn't see her at Cake Palooza. She was there, but I didn't see her. So again, there was quite a few people and I don't know, I looked for her. I didn't even see her booth, which was, um, I don't know, I was surprised that I didn't see it. So I didn't purchase anything from Victoria because I usually try to get something from her. But I think she has an update today. Uh, what day is today? Well, the day that I'm recording is October 22nd. So she has an update today. So I'm going to go there to the update and I'm going to get a sock set. I don't know what colorway yet, but I am going to use her yarn to make my first pair of socks. So last year at Rhinebeck, I purchased sock blockers because I was going to make my first pair and I never did. A year later, I never did it. And now I'm going to do it. I'm going to get her yarn and I'm going to put myself together. And this winter, I am going to aim for like, my deadline is going to be the end of winter. I'm going to make my first pair of socks. Um, Alexi, um, she was also there, of course, with her husband and her son. And it was his first rhyme back out of the, you know, in, out and about, which was super cute. Um, and it was just lovely. She has the most beautiful family and and they look so supportive to each other. So that's always so nice. I think as a maker, you need that support um, from your family members. So it was lovely. And again, thank you so much, Alexi, for extending um, you know, for being so generous for your hospitality, it truly touched me and, and thank you. I, I don't, thank you. Thank you so much for that. I got to see Gigi and I always look for Gigi and Gigi also gives the most beautiful hugs. He's, I told her yesterday, it was, it's one of those hugs that you feel, you know, when you go say hello to somebody, if it's like something quick, you just give it and, you know, maybe you give a kiss and say hello and all of that. But Gigi is like she's in hug mode. Let me hug you. And it's lovely. So it's, I told her it's one of those hugs that make me also like, <sighs> like breathe. And and it's it's it feels so beautiful. Uh, that's all I can say. I don't think I can explain it, but it just feels 
so beautiful. Um, so we got to be there for a little bit and her cutie and my cutie. And so, so glad to have been able to see Shelby um, this year as well. So after Ryan Beck, so after, you know, meeting and meeting, you meet people everywhere, um, all through Ryan Beck. I think a lot of the meetups we had at the on the hill this year, we spent a lot of time on the hill this time. Um, then we went to see the rest of the buildings that we didn't see. We went to the museum, we took the girls, uh, we got a few scrunchies from the ladies there. We spent some time with the ladies at the museum that are working on all, the, all of these beautiful crafts. And... And it was great. It was just lovely to walk. The weather was absolutely beautiful. So one of the things that I appreciated so much this time, comparing it to the last last year, is that because it was raining so much, you know, they, I didn't sit anywhere outside. So I was exhausted. I think by two or three o'clock, I was so done because the only time we sat down was when we were having lunch. But this time after walking and walking, it was easy, very easy to find a place to sit down. The other, the only thing that I didn't get and I really wanted to get was one of the bags with the Rhinebeck, um, with the sheep and wool logo for this year. So I'm hoping that they do a few more rounds of printing it so we can get it online because I couldn't get it online. I couldn't get it at the event and I would really, really love to have one of those bags. So after the event, um, we went to an event that Hobi and Tony and Gwen, Teal Wine Crafts and, um, and her mom Gwen, they put together. So they invited a, a few of makers and a few designers to go to this event. So I was very happy. And again, um, Tony, thank you so much for the for extending this invitation to, to my family. And we loved it. Uh, we went to, the event was in New York as well. Um, maybe, how long? Maybe an hour, an hour and a half from Rhinebeck, I would say. And it was awesome. It was it was really cool. So it was, and I didn't mention that. I think at, from Cake Palooza, I don't. I think I forgot to say it. They had Hobi in there, and I have been working uh, with Hobi a few times uh, for a few years, and some of my patterns are on their Hobi Plus. So this is the first time that I meet the ladies behind Hobi, and it was awesome. So these are girls that I'm constantly emailing back and forth, back and forth. And it was wonderful to have been able to meet them. So if I mention this, forgive me, but at Cake Palooza, they had, um, they had some games going on so you won yarn. So we won some yarn in there. My daughter got some. Well, my daughter got one and I got like six skeins of Hobie. And then at this event um, hosted by Hobie, Tony and her mom, they had all of this yarn on display. They had some yarn on the table. So if you wanted to knit or crochet, you were more than welcome to do that. Um, so we were just talking. We were talking with each other. And then at some point, they had Hobi bingo. And I got some of the cards. So I'm just going to give an example of what they did. So they had music i mean they had they had um food pizza a few appetizers it was it was awesome but in the game what they did is that they would put songs um you know regular songs and then they would change the the title to fit um knitting or fiber art so for example they would play the song we all got our card and then if you um had everything on the on a, on one row, you would win a, a small prize. Then, if you had two rows fail, you would win another prize. And then, if you had the all the card, then you would get a bigger prize, of course. So, some examples. Um, they played um, a song by Adele, and they named it "Knitting in the Deep." Um, from N Sync, they named the song "Knit's Gonna Be Me." Uh, from Rick Springfield, Jesse's Pearl. Uh, let me see which one. Uh, Survivor, Eye of the Fiber. Britney Spears, Need Me Baby One More Time. Um, 
Aerosmith, I Don't Wanna Need a Thing, Mariah Carey, Yarnbreaker, Seal, Need From a Rose. And these are just some of the songs that I had in, in, in this card. And it was very fun. So we were all singing the songs, trying to find out. I had a hard time because I don't know who sings what. I mean, I know Aerosmith, I know Adele. Um, I know Britney Spears, Mariah Carey, things like that. But some of the other ones, I know the song and I and everything, but I don't know who sings the song. So our girls were helping me. I mean, my girls and Angie's girls were like, that's this one or that's the other one. Um, so my daughter won one of the prizes and it was yarn, accessories. So it's so much yarn that I'm not going to show you everything, but I'm going to give you a little peek. Before that, I forgot to show you that at Cake Palooza, I I think this is the only thing, my only purchase. It's this mini skein kit from Knit Collage. Let me try to adjust this in the camera. Okay, there you go. Sorry for trying to, to peek down. So I'm going to make uh, one of their beanie patterns with this yarn. And this is the yarn that my daughter and I got from Hobia Cake Palooza. So this yarn is, um, a lot of them are Happy Place. This is a Pricity. This is the new yarn that they made in collaboration with Tony from Teal Yarn Crafts. So we got this color. I need, okay, here. Got this color and this color. So we got a few skeins in those tones. So this is from Cake Palooza. But now I'm going to, and my daughter has a couple bags with her because now she's crocheting and she didn't know what she wanted to do. So she brought a couple bags with her downstairs. But we got these beautiful bags from Hobie. I love project bags. I know I have mentioned this before, but if there is something that I love about my job, <laughs> it's the project bags. So I'm going to show you some of the yarns. This is also a pre-city. Um, we were knitting with it at the event. Uh, we also got Happy Place. Also, one of the yarns that um, they made with Tony. We got another... A pretty in this beautiful color. I don't know yet. I haven't had time to sit down and open everything. I haven't opened everything. So I don't know what I'm making yet. With all these colors, I'm sure it's going to be something fair aisle. Um, I have to make something fair aisle with all of these tones. Okay, I think you can see the yellow. You can. You could see it a little bit in there. We got um, a lot of happy place. These colors are so lovely. These are so fitting for fall. I am just thinking, is this fall going to be enough for me to knit with all of them? But having too much yarn is never an issue. And it's so lovely, look at this. This is one of my favorites. This is also happy place. Okay, thank you for bearing with me as I show, um, as I try to focus the color. This one is Flash It from Hobie. So I saw this one and I thought, you know, this would be something that I would love to put on a sweater. Um, maybe on my Milagro sweater, I'm still working on the adult version of it. Um, because so many things got in between. So I have the Milagro sweater sizes 2 to 12 on all my shops and I'm working on the adult version so I was thinking of making a Milagro sweater and just including maybe a few stripes with this super beautiful beautiful splash of color uh, this is one of the yarns that they made with pom-pom it's called garland and I got a few in that color. Oh no, this is another color. This is a brighter orange. Okay. 
Okay, you can see some in there. And I also got from Pom Pom this one, Pom Pom with Hobie. There you go. I got uh, quite a few skeins of Friends wool. These colors, uh, more earth tones. And there is more Happy Place, um, a pre-CD. We got a lot of their candy too. If you have placed an order with Hobby, um, I think the first thing that I look for is the candy <laughs> before I get to see the yarn. So we got quite a few candies. My daughter also got this little case to put her notions in. My goodness. Okay, here we go. So she can put her notions in there. Super cute. She loves it. Um, I have to put everything out so she can start putting everything in her room. There is more. Um, she also got, I don't know if that's in this box or in the box that she has downstairs. But she got um, um, quite a few candy bags, different kinds of candies. I am not keeping that in my studio. That... <laughs> This is uh, Thin and Tone. This is 100% Nerino wool. Also from Hobie. All of these are just Hobie. Look at this. Just absolutely stunning. We got more Apricity, um, more Happy Place. I don't know, maybe, I'm just saying, maybe there are going to be quite a few pattern releases for spring because there is so much yarn um, from Happy Place that it will be amazing just for spring and summer. So I have to get my design notebook and, and start sketching and see the things that I have in there to see what can I make with that yarn. This is uh, the other one, friend, Flash It from, from Hobby, sorry. Let me see if this... Okay, here you go, look at that. So pretty. Um, a lot of apricity, friends wool. Um, this is another thin and tone. Let me see, can you see the colors here? Oof, maybe, yeah, like greens. And the last one of that kind Tint and tone is in this beautiful color. Look. Okay, I think you can see in there. And in here, she also got uh, some notions. She got some needles. She got all these super cute stitch markers. The sheep stitch markers. Now I'm putting all the yarn on the computer, <laughs> the computer here. She got a couple project bags. One in this color, the, the kind that you can just, uh, you can knit or crochet as you walk. She got one in this color and I think the other one is a light blue. And there is just a lot of yarn. Um, kid silk in this color. So these are very nice to pair together with something else. And there is more Happy Place and Apricity and chocolates. And this morning she put more chocolates downstairs and caramels. This is Kingston, New York, vegan milk. I love the packaging of this one. Let me... Thank you. Okay, here we go. Thank you for being patient as I keep showing or trying to show you the colors. So there is more in here. There is more and more in here in these bags and and everything so you are gonna be seeing them all um i told my daughter you know you can i mean she's crocheting already so she can she's more than welcome to to have everything that she wants but everything that i'm gonna be using you're gonna be seeing because I, i'll be showing you it's just beautiful beautiful colors so now i have to find a place behind here um, to put everything and just have them on display. 
So now I don't know where I did with my notes. Oh, here they are. Never mind, those are not my notes. I want to make sure that I'm sharing everything with you. I'm sure that by now you have been seeing um, a lot of pictures or videos about Rhinebeck. Um, it has a meaning, a different meaning for everybody. And I'm sure you can see that most people, they were enjoying themselves. I really, truly enjoyed myself. I loved the weekend. Again, this was super tiring, but in a good way, in a good way. I mean, we can always catch up on sleep later, but it was a wonderful weekend. Uh, it's an opportunity to, to be with other people other people that love the fiber arts like you do and people that you can actually like relate and talk to about them and it's just absolutely wonderful. So I'm going to end that end up here and I hope that you enjoy watching this recap of my experience at Rhinebeck. If you went to Rhinebeck, let me know what do you love the most. If you didn't go, what would be your favorite thing from what you saw that you think, you know, that would, that would have been my favorite thing if I went? So let me know in the comments. Now, something else, we are almost at the thousand subscribers. So I have, I have been planning a giveaway for when we get to the thousand subscribers. So make sure to comment if you think that some of your friends would enjoy the content that I'm sharing with you here in the podcast, please feel free to share with them. If you would like to, to continue seeing content uh, from my channel, please subscribe, like this video if you enjoyed it, comment down below, and this helps me, this helps my channel to grow a little bit more and maybe to be able to show this content to um, other people that would enjoy it. So I'm going to leave you right now. Thank you for the time that you gave me today. And I am going to see you very soon on episode 20. Happy making. <music>